welcome to this week's edition of the Bond Room Unlocked, where we take an item from this 27 year old Bond collection and relate it to one of the Bond films that we know and love. And today it is from Russia with Love from 1963, the truest of all spy films in the Bond franchise. It's Connery's second outing. It's a darker, more shadowier film than its predecessor uh, with the Caribbean cocktail of Dr. No that was released a year before. Now, sexual freedom was coming to the 60s and Bond being a skip in front took this on board. Remember Tatiana Ramanova lying in Bond's bed wearing nothing but a choker? Fleming very much delved into the world of sexuality particularly in the novels. In the films, however, it was hinted on through certain characters and their sexual preferences. Rosa Klebb, Spectre number three, although probably a stereotype in today's day and age, very much leans towards lesbianism through the way she deals with Tatiana Ramanova in first meeting her and examining her and through the stern look that she gives Morenzi, played by Walter Gottel, when he touches her arm. And there's Kronstein. In the books, Kronstein is seen as bisexual, yet this isn't even addressed in the film. We see more for his love of chess. And if we look at the wider Bond circle, we have Mr Winter, Mr Kidd from Diamonds of Forever in 1971, Definitely strongly hinted that these are lovers by holding hands, Mr. Wint wears women's perfume, and when Mr. Kidd says, They're both aboard. I must say, Miss Case seems quite attractive for a lady. Yet all of these characters are seen as villainous. In the 50s and 60s, these sexual diversities would have been seen as morally wrong. My, how times have changed. How you're trying to remember your training now? What's the regulation to cover this? Well, first time for everything, yes. What makes you think this is my first time? Oh, Mr. Bond. A controversial scene that I want to focus on is the crazed catfight between love rivals Zora and Vida at the gypsy encampment. Bond is taken to there by his ally and head of Station T, uh, Kerim Bay, played brilliantly by the late Pedro Armendariz. Now, Kerim Bay, like Bond, is a lover of the finer things in life, food, drink, women and entertainment. And why not marry the two together? And he displays Bond to a form of a cat fight, which is uh, captivating and very, very racy. And um, it was a thrilling and daring sequence that had never been seen in mainstream cinema. And it had a real ferocity to it. Elisa Gurr, who played the role of Vida, said that Peter Perkins, the stunt choreographer, advised her that don't take it lightly, rehearse the fight and remember every move. of memorabilia I want to share with you today is a vehicle from the film. Now remember me saying that Kerim Bay was a lover of women and as a result of this he had many offspring who worked for him. So a family car was needed, one that was big enough to 
carry the family and blend in uh, to the surroundings nothing flashy the ford ranch wagon we see bond being chauffeured to the gypsy encampment in this car and also we see it later on in the film driven by two of Kerim bay's sons as a rendezvous vehicle now ford stated at the time that the ford ranch wagon offered the biggest cargo space and the lowest price for a station wagon at that time so you see why Kerim bay owned one of these vehicles blending in lots of space and remember he did own a rolls royce too now i have a model of the ford ranch wagon here produced by eagle moss in its fortnightly supplement the james bond car collection back in 2007 and it's a great detailed car uh, which, which you can see there parked in the countryside which is when the um the sons were using the car and it has the parking meters there at the front of the car and the, and the very stylish grill and then of course you know we've got the more more boot space for this particular type of car and some of these cars were actually wooden in design uh, but this model was completely steel now another uh, prime example of this type of vehicle comes from another franchise of films the 80s classic vacation films starring chevy chase Clark, I think we're lost. We're not lost. Helen, will you please let me do the driving? I honestly don't think you're going to find the Grand Canyon on this road. Jesus, it's only the biggest goddamn hole in the world. Clark, watch your language. Make that the second biggest. Dad, I haven't seen a car for an hour. Oh, shut up, Audrey. You don't think Dad knows where he's going. Thank you, Russ. You're lost. Ma, I saw some detour signs. I didn't see any. I saw them when you and Mom were trying to fold the map. Audrey, when they close the road, they put up big signs, like this one. Ah! Absolutely classic. So that's it for this week. If you have enjoyed this look at sexual liberation from Russia with love, juxtaposed with the family wagon, then beep the horn and give it an MI6 stamp of approval and click on the notifications below. And why not subscribe to the channel? The Bond Room Unlocked features all things Bond, so don't miss out. You can also catch me on Facebook and on Instagram with more Bond content. You can also catch me occasionally co-hosting with spymovienavigator.com cracking the code of spy movies with friends dan silvestri and tom Pizzato. so check those podcasts out too i'd like to thank you for supporting this channel and i'll see you next week